Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of Cudlow. I'm Sean Duffy in for Larry Cudlow. More than 100 classified intelligence documents about the war in Ukraine have been leaked online and posted to various social media sites, circulating for weeks before raising alarm bells. The Pentagon and DOJ are now launching an investigation to hunt down the culprit. Let's bring in Cash Patel, former Deputy Director of National Intelligence, former DOD Chief of Staff and former House Intelligence Committee uh, advisor, and he's the author of the great book, Government Gangsters. Cash, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Very important day, big issue. Um, this could get even worse, Cash. Take a listen to what National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby had to say earlier today. Do you believe the leak is contained? Are there more documents out there that have not been released publicly? Is this an ongoing threat? We don't know. We truly don't. I mean, Cash, they don't know? How serious could this be, and how could they let this happen? Sean, it's great to be with you. And I don't take any uh, wording from the National Security Advisor spokesperson, John Kirby, because he doesn't see any chaos in Afghanistan. Of course, right. he has no idea how classified intelligence leaks are going to be uh, treated by this government and the Biden administration. What I do know is this, from running the intelligence community and the DOD. They sat on this leak for three weeks, at least three weeks. We'll probably find out it was longer. They tried to get the media to say it was purportedly a false fake leak. Then when they got caught nearly a month later, they finally said, oh, it's a serious classified leak. And let me just tell you, when you talk about Ukraine, war planning operations, China, and the Mossad, the Israeli spy agency, that's some of our most sensitive collection that we have, which only a handful of Americans have had access to. So they've known about it, they've let it happen, and now they've metastasized that problem by just punting the football down the road to hopefully watch it go away. And the rest of the world has been at it, photographing it and manipulating it and using it against America's interest. And the only thing the Biden administration can tell you is, I don't know. So it's interesting. You say only a small number of people have access to it. So it shouldn't be that hard, one, to mm -hmm. figure out who leaked the documents uh, out online if they, if they were leaked. Or do you think we were possibly hacked? Did, did a foreign entity hack us and then release the documents? What happened here? If it's the latter, and if we're talking about foreign entity hacking, we are talking about some of the most sophisticated yeah. hacking operations into the DOD network ever. And it would be tragic for America if that were the case. I know a leak of classified information of this nature is felonious and is extremely damaging to national security. But if I were to have to pick between the two, a leak would be better. And you're right. The DOJ could have came in and investigated this matter early and from Jump Street. And from an intelligence community perspective, what the American public should have been known or told was that we have a leak, it's under control, and we are not going to let our enemies utilize this information against us. But no, they sat on it, just like they sat on the facts in Afghanistan and just like they sat on the facts on our border and anything else to do with national security. And the only people that are harmed are the citizens of this country. So, Cash, if these documents are accurate, what they say is that the Ukraine air defenses mm -hmm. Um, are going to be depleted by the middle of, uh, of May. I mean, that's a real problem. We spent $115 billion as U.S. taxpayers giving armaments to Ukraine. Should we let Ukraine go and actually focus on their real threat to America, which is China and their, their preparation for war and taking over Taiwan? Well, I've always said that, you know, if we have extra money to help over the Ukraine, we should do it. But we should secure our border and take on our adversaries like China and Russia first and maybe even Iran. But what's more shocking is what you just highlighted in the document. They said that essentially the American plan is failing in the Ukraine, according to this classified intelligence leak. But the propaganda from the Biden administration is that we are being wildly successful in the Ukraine. The two cannot coexist. And I think this classified leaks document exposes the lies of the Biden administration and the falsities about pouring hundreds of billions of dollars into a war that we have no business interfering with because we couldn't even prevent it in the first place. And I think America is about to learn a hard reality check that this government that is supposed to safeguard our national security and take on our adversaries is failing to do both on a monstrous level that's detrimental to us. You know, Cash, you make a good point. So Joe Biden and the media tell us that Ukraine is winning, all our money is being spent really well, they're going to beat the Russians. But internally, mm -hmm. which Joe Biden knows this because he gets these briefings, the analysis is that Ukraine is losing. I mean, it's, it's too bad our government lies to us. And if you lie to us on, uh, on some things, you tell us truth and others, we don't believe you on anything. And that's the problem they have, a lack of credibility with the American people. But Cash, I want to turn to China. Tensions are high around Taiwan after Beijing yeah. conducted three days of military drills with the intent to simulate an attack on the island. 
House Foreign Affairs Chairman Michael mm -hmm. McCall led a bipartisan delegation to Taiwan and had this to say about uh, the attack. Take a listen. There's a political debate here. The two different parties, um, one party wants to talk to China. President Tsai's party uh, does not want to be a part of China. And I think the next elections in next mm -hmm. January are going to be extremely important because I do believe with the former President Mao in, uh, in China right now, China is going to try to influence this next election and take over the island right. without a shot fired. What's your, ca what's, your, what's your take, Cash? From a DOD perspective, the activities in the South China Sea are extremely alarming. We used many measures to countermand that during the Trump administration when I was chief of staff, and we didn't have these types of 360-D aerial incursions and those by the nautical uh, waters surrounding Taiwan. Putting that aside, this administration has taken a completely different posture. Its allies and Joe Biden are absent. Uh, Macron is bending the knee to Xi Jinping in China, disparaging the United States of America and saying, you have no place on the global stage, and China, please stop your war in the Ukraine. And Joe Biden, on, day, on the, this day of all days, decides to lead out with the Easter Bunny. Not that there's anything wrong with Easter or the Easter Bunny, but sometimes national security is a little more important. While he runs away to Ireland, and we are on the precipice of yet another world war in the South China Sea, and the leadership is just absent, and you see the priorities. The priorities are not taking on America's adversaries like China and Russia. It's just looking for the next political headline so yeah. they can lie about it to the American people. Yeah, you know, with, with regard to China, Joe Biden can't even muster political support to ban TikTok, number one. But also you have American mm -hmm. businesses, whether it's Walmart or, uh, or Apple, others, it, Elon Musk with Tesla, going into China, making more investments, mm -hmm. strengthening their ties with China, and they're, they're rattling their saber, wanting to go to war with Taiwan and maybe with us. I wish that American companies had a, a, a little more patriotism in them, wore the American lapel mm -hmm. pin a little bit brighter and said, you know what, I'm an American and we are going to um, de-risk from China. We might not come home to America, but we might go somewhere else because we don't like the communists. We like freedom. We like the Constitution. We love America and we're going to get out. But they don't. They keep investing in China. It's a tragic course for private sector engagement in China. Yeah. And the scariest part, and you know this, Sean, from your detailed experience here, is that China is moving to replace the petrodollar. That it means that the renminbi, the yuan in China, is being utilized by agencies and uh, departments around the world to replace the United States dollar for all dollar-backed transactions around the world. They did it in Saudi Arabia. They're on the verge of doing it with France. And they have shown how much America has fallen, not just America, but our dollar. And you just hit on it. The financial position of this country vis-a-vis -vis China has catastrophically imploded since Joe Biden took office. And there's nothing this administration is doing, no tariffs, no diplomatic regulations, no sanctions, nothing to countermand that effect. And I fear it's going to only exponentially increase and get worse for America. Well, to the point, we have a 30, $32 trillion in debt. Next 10 years, we're on a pathway of Joe Biden has his way to... 52, 55 trillion dollars in debt. The mm. Fed has almost nine trillion dollars on its balance sheet printed new currency. I mean, it's it's a disaster, and we don't have any adults in the room trying to you know correct course and and stabilize the dollar. Let's uh, let's move on, Cash. With all these foreign policy crises, a majority of Americans are uh, are doubting mm. President Biden's ability to lead on a number of issues. 65 percent, 65 percent of Americans say they're not confident in Biden to deal effectively with China, and about the same amount, 60% of Americans, are not confident in Biden's ability to handle an international crisis. So, Cash, here you have a guy who says, I want to run for president in 2024, but his poll numbers are horrible. People don't trust Joe Biden to address the biggest issues they face in their life. How does he run and how does he win in 2024? Maybe he doesn't. I don't see it happening. Um, the, the statistics you just put forward to me, national security and the economy, are the two most important issues for everyday Americans. And with the explosion of, the Ch of Chinese fentanyl through the southern border, with the explosion of the Chinese digital fentanyl, that is TikTok, and the economic hardships that Americans are seeing firsthand from a Joe Biden administration, you can believe the polls or not. But you can go to everyday communities across America like you and I do and see the impacts. And they don't have to say it publicly. It's not a I love Trump or hate Trump reality. The reality is Joe Biden is failing. And if he's going to run in 2024, I think he's going to run against the presumptive nominee in Donald Trump. And he's going to be able to say, 
Look at the economy and the border and how I took on China and Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin and how I outdid the Ayatollahs in Iran. And people are going to realize the difference when you make a national security mission your actual priority versus when you politicize it like this Biden administration has done across the board. You know, when things go so, so poorly under the Biden administration, there's a lot of people who will forgive Donald Trump for some personality traits they may not like, but they love the results mm. of, the, of the Donald Trump economy which you served in, and I think it's going to be an interesting election should Donald Trump be the nominee. Cash Patel, always smart. Thanks for joining me. Thanks so much, John. Yeah.